Welcome to Sawyer Paddles and Oars Live. We are back. It is uh, Thursday, 4 o'clock Pacific time and uh, 7 o'clock out of the East Coast. And we are uh, very fortunate today to be uh, talking with one of the artists that uh, worked on our Artists in Square, Stop, Square Top series. And um, before I uh, lead into, into that intro, I did want to just remind you of a few things. Um, we do have two different campaigns going on right now that are actually deadlining and coming to finish at midnight tonight. So if you haven't put a photo into the photo contest and you're on our Facebook page right now viewing this, go ahead and click that link up there and actually uh, send in a photo so you can get yourself into that photo contest. And then we are also doing a, uh, a food share, access food share drive where you make a donation to access food share fire that confirmation over to info at sawyerstation.com and get you in there and we're giving away a brand new pair of square tops as well. But today we're here with uh, Max Stockton from uh, back east and he is actually the artist that had, did all the art for our newest Artist in Square Top series which is the Smallmouth Bath series and I'll let Matt introduce himself and I will take it from there. Hey everyone, uh, Matthew Stockton here, um, fish artist, Michigan based, uh, East Coast. Um, I basically focus uh, a lot of my artwork around like the um, apex predators of Michigan. So it's basically anything ranging from a gnarly kiped out uh, brown trout to a toothy musky to a brute chunky smallmouth uh, that's all nice and war painted up which we're here to talk about today. Excited, um, thrilled. Uh, I went to Western Michigan, arts background, um, and just a avid fly fisherman, fisherman all, all across the board. Um, preferably streamer junkie, ADHD. Got to keep me focused. Um, well, got to, yeah, the action and everything like that. Uh, dry flies, I just can't stick to it. So, um, yeah, that's basically me. <laughs> nice, nice. And I know, you know, we basically, uh, you came highly recommended and, uh, you know, it took us a while to, to get connected with each other. But um, tell me some of the other projects that you've worked on, because I know that, uh, you know, all these guys out in the, in the, in the bass world, they, they know you exactly who you are. <laughs> Coming from the West Coast, we didn't really know much about it. But um, yeah, tell us a little bit about just some of the projects that you have done in the past before this came about. um i've actually been uh blessed uh the doors that have been opened up and the people that i've met through the fishing world um hands down the fishing world flat out the most genuine people in the world uh mike schultz sort of took me under my wing um uh in the early stages of derek d young uh he helped out big time and he's like mr picasso right now in the art world uh, just to have some of those uh, big hitters with Greg. Greg Senyo was another huge part, Bob Linsman. Um, so they really got me got me tied into this, um, and I'm thankful for it. It started with a sort of like a small group of people, uh, just your average uh, people that just want to be like the trout bum diary, right. uh, fishing <laughs> buddies. Um, my other oh, buddy, yeah. Scott, uh, Scott Hollander, he was another art teacher that I met. Um, and a good friend, Jason Fulmer, he was a phenomenal photographer and we just started going on these fishing trips and uh, I got cranking away on some some pieces of artwork and I just fell in love with it um, and everything yeah. sort of like fell into play after that. And I've been lucky to work with uh, the best um, fishing company in the world, uh, which is Sims. And then I've been blessed with this awesome best ore company in the world doing uh, one of my favorite species of fish um, that is like the Street Fighter slash Rocky Balboa in right. any river <laughs> right, or lake. Right. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I think those are some, we, of, uh, some of the pieces. Yeah, when we met up with, uh, with Tim's crew out there, you know, he, uh, he I think he pulled out a, a Sims item and he's just like, this guy, this is the guy we need. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. I mean, I, I know the company, but, you know, I mean, we don't fish for bass much out west. 
So um, for those of you just joining us, um, basically today we're talking a little bit about our newest release of the uh, Artisan Square Top series. Um, we do have Derek monitoring the uh, feed here as well. So if you have any questions or comments, please fire them off and we will do our best to get to every one of them. The, uh, the Square Top Artisan series is something that uh, blossomed a few years ago, kind of happened at a trade show when I was sitting around with Link Jackson. And uh, he's actually produced a couple installments to, to the series himself. Um, but they were kind of, they are regional. And so, you know, he's very passionate about Steelhead and so am I. And so that's kind of the first thing he did. And um, we found out that that kind of had traction kind of out, out west. And then uh, Ty Hallett came on board and uh, produced a nice brown trout. And, and that kind of took some good, good distribution all around. And, and then uh, we, we worked with Hank Patterson a little bit to, uh, to come up with the fictitious fish. We figured it would just work everywhere and, and linked it up to Cuddy Rain Brown. And um, we thought, well, that fish is total fictitious. It could be fished anywhere. You know, somebody will get that wherever. And as we kept pushing this on, it, uh, we got out, out east and started uh, spending some time with the guys out there in the Midwest. And they're just like, man, you got to do it. You got to do a smallie one. And so when that came about, it was just kind of like, hey, you got to get a hold of Matt. And, um, and so that's where the whole process began. And uh, Matt can tell you a little bit how it is that it's, it's definitely takes some time to get this all together. I think uh, Tim introduced, introduced uh, Matt to us, and, uh, and then you kind of uh, played some phone tag and some, uh, some messages on Instagram back and forth with Derek quite a bit, and then we finally got connected, and, and it's, uh, it's quite a lengthy process because we need to kind of convey to you, the artist, what we need and what we're going to do, and, then, and then, it, then once we get those pieces, then we can start that process. So. Let's talk about that just at the very beginning as far as, you know, those first contacts, like you kind of knew what, what the ore was, but not really exactly what we were going to be needing from you. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was awesome. Like, uh, like you said, pretty much, uh, Tim reached out to me one day, um, and he sent me a message and he's like, Hey man, I got a project for you and I think it would be perfect for you. And I was like, all right, well, let, let's hear it, man. And he's like, dude, smallmouth, oars, sawyers, we need them. We need it for the smallmouth alliance. I love your stuff. Um, it has edge. It has boldness. And you really capture that Street Fighters-ish smallmouth, gnarly. Uh, right. Went 18 rounds with someone. So he reached out to me, and I was like, yeah, man, I would be honored. And then that's where we fell into play, uh, responding back and forth through emails. And I was like, yeah, I got a, I got a great idea. Um, and you were all on board on it. And um, luckily, this piece back here, who doesn't nice. like throwing a feather game changer right there? <laughs> you know, compliments of Blaine, the master tire of everything. Um, and this was just a beautiful piece. And I was like, this would be great. I, I, and we sort of went from there and I sent some other images and then we came up with a, a mock layout that I thought hands down would be a total home run. And it, yeah. it was a home run. Um, and unfortunately, uh, we were supposed to push this March. Um, right, and it was supposed right. to be at the Midwest uh, Fly Fishing Expo. And I'm going to say it again, the pictures awesome but like in person it's mind-blowing um the detail right, the colors right, right. and it's it's just a perfect ore for any bass junky small mouth person that just loves and is passionate for anyone or for the fish absolutely oh yeah yeah and you know and that's one of the things so like you know you were talking like we we literally had this all set up you know once we got we got everything set up with you. That process of getting that ore produced is actually fairly lengthy. And uh, Shushka, who's in the background monitoring this and helping us get this all done, she does a lot of this, all, a lot of the behind the scenes stuff on this project as well. And so it's really kind of taking your artwork and realizing that you have to work with this medium of these certain dimensions. And then we literally are using a, a surfboard 
company process. And surfboards work with a total blank white canvas, right? So they, that's how they put very vivid images on there is they're fiberglassing those images on there. And so we, uh, we got working with this company down in Southern California and um, for like, for probably the first, first four or five orders, they're just like, what the heck are you guys doing with this stuff? And I've been just like the last few years been educating them on like, I had to send them a bunch of pictures and just say, this is what we're doing. You know, it's like, it's, it doesn't, it's not a white canvas, it's wood grain and this is how it works. But literally they, they print your image onto, onto a material that we can use. And so we can fiberglass it into the ores. And so that's kind of how it came about. But, um, but yeah, so yeah. like you said, you know, we were, go ahead. Absolutely. I, I would say that like, as an artist, you're used to like any canvas size, like that was, you had to fit it to the dimension. And like, as an artist, that was probably the most challenging for this project, trying to visualize it and make sure that you could get that image in there, um, which we were able to do, which I was totally happy with. Um, and like just knowing that it's going on a shaft on an oar and you're already picturing it in your mind. It's like, ah, oh, like, how am I going to do this? Um, I want to be able to fit the whole small mouth. I want this section in right, there. Right. And you guys crushed it. You crushed it on yeah. it. Um, you were able to work with me. Um, working with any artist is probably not the easiest thing uh, because right, their, right, their right. mind's always going 24-7. Yeah, um so it's it's always interesting on that part but uh yeah it, yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was fortunate that we um you know that the that the project originated with an artist so we kind of already knew those challenges going in and um and so yeah that was a lot of it is just kind of reaching out to the artist being like this is what we need this is kind of how it has to be and and then getting that converted and um, the first couple ones definitely it, it took us you know a few a few attempts to get it actually narrowed down. But, um, and we did actually, um, so um, we, we originally had this um, really thinking about like the Pacific Northwest. So we did produce a couple sockeye versions. Um, Ed Anderson did a sockeye version, just dynamite. I mean, I love the graphic, but it just wasn't something that really, you know, just really latched on. And so we didn't get much traction with that one. And then, uh, Greg Schlegel did another whole history of the uh, sockeye. And once again, just tells an incredible story, but um, we just didn't get the, enough traction on, on either one of those. And so those are kind of limited right now and we still have them in the SKU, but um, you know, we're kind of moving and trying to adjust to uh, where the need is. So, so this event, you know, we, we got that project going and we were ready to get it all dialed in. And um, it was perfect because we had the, the fly show going on in Minnesota and the fly show going on in the Midwest. And they were like a week apart and Tim was going to one and Mike was going to the other. And we're just like, all right, this is perfect. You guys are both the smallmouth guys. You know, <laughs> Matt's going to be there. We'll get this all done. And so we put the, put the pressure on. We were just like, get all this, all the artwork done. We start getting everything put together. And, you know, we literally shipped product to to Mike and to Tim. So right now, that's the only place that those products are right now. So so Mike uh, Mike Schultz, his operation has some available for folks, and then Tim's operation is uh, Tight Lines, I believe, yep. up in up in Michigan, and he has these available as well. And those guys are the only two that really have have these in in yep. stock right now, besides us here on the West Coast and. Uh, and so, yeah, like you said, you know, to be able to see them is very, it's very just magnetic. Like people pick them up, like when we do them at shows, we always have at least a couple artisan ores in the front of our rack. Like they're the stuff that's right outside. And even if people aren't in the market for a pair of ores, they'll, they'll still gravitate to them and grab them and just, just want to check out the graphics, you know? And they'll like, they'll spin them around, look at the graphics and they're like, oh, wow, how do you do that? And it's like, oh, well, that's straight secret, man. We'd have to kill you. But, <laughs> secret ingredient. But, you know, it's like, that's one of those things that, um, and like, like you said, I mean, that is, we hear that all the time is basically seeing them in person is very, 
very just very much magnetic and just kind of draws people to it because like you said pictures just don't don't do it justice yeah, yeah you know? it's it's it definitely adds character right there um and it definitely adds the flash um and like like i said earlier if you're passionate about something this this would be it you know it all helps out to a good cause so why not um Absolutely. you know like uh the smallmouth alliance is nowhere close to the trout unlimited where it trolls in millions of dollars so it's almost like all the bass dudes like you said tim guiding for 20 years ninja on the river mike the young guy that's been guiding for i believe since 2003 over in schultz another another dude that's like if you can have two dudes on the river these are the two guys right here outside of you know like blaine and the smallmouth right, um right. which is which is awesome to have those two guys be like the rep and like tim to be the bull um that really pushes it um but uh you know it's like i said it's all the bass guys need to come together for this great cause and right. they are right. like in person like you said mind-blowing um the detail and everything the orange really pops um so it's it would be I'm just waiting to get out there to get the small right, mouth, right, right. get a get picture out next the water. to it. Exactly. You know, this exactly. stuff just needs to go away so I can get out there. <laughs> right, right, right. Yep, yep. And so, like, you know, you talked a little bit about the uh, the small mouth alliance and, um, and, you know, the Artisan Series kind of has always had a fishery cause to it. And so one of the things is people are, they gravitate to the really cool graphics and, that's one of the major reasons people buy them, but people do like the fact that, that it gives back to their fishery. And, um, and so we've worked with Save Our Wild Salmon. 5% of every ore goes to some cause. And, um, and that we've done that since the, since the beginning and um, having, the, having the Smallmouth Alliance as part of that is just great to have another element that kind of really ties that exact ore to that piece. And um, this, the, the Artisan Square Top, is primarily, you know, square tops, but we've actually kind of broadened that scope a little bit. And so that's where um, we actually took your, your image and turned it into an MX version as well. So somebody that has got exchangeable blades, you know, they can still get that. And that still has a percentage that we can put towards that cause as well. And, um, you know, I know that, that pictures don't really uh, do it justice, but I do have one of each of those here. So, um, I'm going to I'm going to show the the square part of the ore which really I think that that's kind of that's the iconic part of the of the square top is just basically what we're looking at is trying to get get that piece up on the up on the square and get the head up on the square and so I'll let you kind of just talk a little bit about it as I'm showing it and you can kind of tell me what you were what you were going going after so and up at the top uh so you really can't see it as well so up at the top it's basically uh oh there it is the head of the the bass chasing a feather game changer um which is most nice. most case uh a very awesome fly outside of the swinging d and the murder murder minnow um so i was like all right this is going to be for sawyer oars we got to have some kind of sweet fly with this awesome fish so i was like all right we got to go to the top let's go with that nice. let's get the head up on the top part and then as you go down the uh shaft it's it's uh, another image of a just a small mouth re repeating repetitive all throughout the whole right. the whole shaft of it so you got like the whole small mouth on top of a uh, right. nice so orange we color this really one here is, is kind of how it how it rolls on the on the MX series. And so the MX series, you can really see the head is done a little bit different because you know, you're dealing with an exact yep. round shaft, right? Where the square top challenge is that you're basically putting the image on something square and then tapering it down to round. <laughs> yeah. And so you know, it's kind of like got those challenges. But then what you're talking about with the, with the orange, basically that's, yep, there it is. that's kind of how the, how the shafts come out with, we just repeated all those fish over multiple times. And because this is a, you know, because this is a uh, new release product, you know, those were the very first ones we did. So we basically did 
the MX series with that with that orange print. Then we did the square top head series, and then we did the body with that orange print. But then this is the first time you get to see this, and uh -oh. we actually <laughs> yeah. So we don't actually um, we don't have you know really good way for you to see this, but it's something that we're probably going to have to address is that we the second run of the of the square top version is exactly the one I showed you. The head is exactly the same as all that that orange on it makes the head pop. But then, like we had talked about, if you imagine the whole body of of the fish, we took that and we repeated it. And so basically now the body basically has all of that all that oh, wow. graphic scale nice. and it comes all the way through. So that's something that we may have to do is actually uh have a little uh have a little poll and see about uh you know what people what people uh what people prefer. Um you know, yeah. I mean I know it's I know you it's You actually the mentioned about that. You mentioned Exactly, yeah. There's, there's oh, yeah, a I told one. you I told you and I, I sort of had the idea in the back of the mind. No, it's it's killer, man. Right. Like, who doesn't like smallmouth? They're they're right. more painted. They 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 come in bronze. They come in blondies. You know, you get some with uh, uh, black spots on them from Lake Saint Clair. Oh, it's yeah. it's exactly. just an awesome fish. And yeah. you know, what so other fish will completely bend the rod over right. on like a small twelve inch to fourteen inch fish compared to like an eighteen inch trout? You know, it's it's just a different fish. Um, it, yeah. It's a fish on steroids, which is which is awesome. And I can see why Mike and Tim guide for these fish. Uh, it's it's just the whole nature. And you know, like a fish, a fish that's like twenty eighteen inches in a river system. That 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 fish is like he's he's the grandpa in the river. You know, it's right. not like oh, yeah. they're not they're, the they're lake. Just, they've got they've got power. You know, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, we don't we don't really get them of the size out out west here. I mean, if you're if you're fishing small smallmouth, you're you're basically just fishing you know the lightest stuff you have. And um, there is definitely people that um that's that's kind of the only thing that that you can target. There's some trout lakes and yep. stuff, but you know we're on an anadromous river system, so it's pretty much migratory runs of salmon and steelhead, and you know and that's really you just kind of you adjust yourself to the season. Absolutely. You know? But uh, but you know as we've made all these different artisan series, it uh, it presents challenges for our guys in the shop because our guys in the shop they're they're manufacturers you know they're they're woodworkers they're 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 basically producing this stuff at a high volume and so then an order comes through and I'll tell them like I need the I need this mum out bass one and they're like what is that like they 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 don't even really know <laughs> so like. When we did when we did up all the scales, if you just kind of look over your shoulder and took in the whole body of that of that graphic, when we repeated that multiple times, the guys in the shop were like, they're like, oh, you mean the fish with the camo on it? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, that's, so that's that's how it's become nicknamed in the shop. Where, it, it is. So I make sure they get the right one. But it um, but yeah, definitely it's is camo things. bars. That's basically it. And that's that's why I yeah. love drawing them. That's why I love painting them. Uh, you know, you like I said, you get bronze one. You could get the ones with the pop of the greens, the chartreuse through them, yeah. or you could get like the blondies, um, which are you know basically the ones that hold up in the sand area, which is you know they're they're like more of a yellowish yellowish color, um, which that's why I love. Don't get me wrong, I love tr I love trout, um, but uh, you know me being a young father with two kids, <laughs> I can only get away so much. And unfortunately, oh, yeah. all my trout rivers are two and a half hours away. And luckily, I'm blessed with uh, the Huron being so close and Lake St. Clair. And what is Lake St. Clair notorious nice. for? Bass and muskie. So I'm a little spoiled in that Very way. Nice. Um, but everything all around, uh, I, I love the fish. But I am definitely very passionate about the um, bass and the muskie, um, which are two awesome fish, hands down. Nice. Um, nice. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I think that part of like talking with Tim, you know, it's like one of those things is that it just, you know, like where their where their whole guide operation is, it's like they have this, they just have a very having a reliable fishery, you know, to where they have so many different stretches that they can that they can fish on a given day, 
and and pretty much just knowing that there's there's this this amount this number of fish in that system that's gonna you know be there producing all through throughout the summertime which is which is great you know i mean coming from out west here you know i mean it's like you're just like you're just kind of waiting for the runs and then you know every person that fishes steelhead fishes fishes earlier than the run's supposed to be there but you know we set the we set the calendar ourselves and the fish don't really know when that is so they basically just uh you know there's you can catch uh summer run steelhead like around the fourth of july sometimes around here and then it's still going all the way through the later fall run all the way into into like november you know i mean I've, I've yep. fished steelhead on Thanksgiving weekend sometimes, you know, and I'm like, okay, it's still <laughs> Got, coming. Gotta love but, mother uh, nature, man. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, and then like we really have, you know, it's different than that in the trout fisheries as well, you know, just those different cycles. And so it's really cool. You know, we did, uh, we did a show out East um, two years ago and um, we purposely didn't bring any of the steelhead versions because we were like, ah, we'll just we'll load up on, and the, the only the only more neutral one we had was the brown trout at that point and so we uh we did load up on the brown trout and people were really into that but they would always come up and check out the graphic and kept telling us that we needed to do a smallie and we needed to do a musky and it was like you know we're like well all right well, you got to buy a lot of them because you know, these things are <laughs> but um but yeah so i was always really glad we finally got this uh got this whole project together and um you know having having tim and mike in the area kind of anchoring that and being stoked on the project is is really helpful as well and um yeah if you, i think i got a something that um from derek so let me check that real quick and um yeah he's kind of asking if uh we can talk a little bit about the uh the smallmouth alliance yeah and, I was and some, actually of its, just, some of its was, conservation issues would be great and help us Help us West Coasters kind of understand, uh, um, you know, what the so small mouth alliance is doing. Now. It's 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 similar aspects as Trout Unlimited. Um, portion of the money goes towards this uh, small mouth alliance. Uh, it's pretty much making let's let's make a better fishery. Uh, let's not harvest the bass. Let's let's keep the bass so they can grow. Let's let's put limitations. Let's uh, better habitat. Um, more, you know better regulations that will benefit this fishery to make it a more dynamic um, fishery where, you know, mm -hmm. as far as like, like I said earlier, like Trout Unlimited, that pushes in like millions of dollars. Um, right. You know, it's, it's not as big as that, but you have, like I said earlier, um, Tim, Tim and Mike are just two great, great dudes um when it when it comes to this and um their knowledge on this is just mind-blowing um the involvement that they put in tim does a lot of work mike does a lot of work with huron um and they're just passionate and under them they have a lot of young young kids that are are passionate too that right that right. live and drive for this so um it definitely helps out a great cause and what what other fishermen you know anybody that's passionate about a species would not want to make that fishery a lot better you you look right, at arkansas right. look how much money they put in to put those little planter rainbows and you look at those steroid brown trout that they have <laughs> and now they probably love it because now us all the michiganders come down and fish it during the breaks so you know that's just like obviously that's a huge chunk but like the work that's been put in is is all for the good um and this or definitely represents that um some of the proceeds go to it and which better way is not to you know go out and help out to a great cause especially if you want to be able to take your son or have your kids fish it you know you don't want it to go to waste right right yeah absolutely you know i mean it's like really you know, we're, we're, we're in that era where, you know, the avid angler is becoming this very passionate conservationist that, you know, it wasn't always that way, you know, and out no. here in, you know, out here in the West, there's, there's different, there's different uh, organizations that used to just be at each other's throats, you know, they would just battle about, you know, how the fishery does this and how the fishery does that. And, 
And, you know, now there's so many, you know, even our guys on the side that don't fly fish, you know, still are starting to really around most of Oregon where we are, you know, pitch the whole, you know, they sell the concept, you know, they're selling the experience, you know, so just to see all your fisheries go to, you know, yeah. hey, if you get a chance to catch that really big fish and get a photo with them, maybe great. And, you know, you had that opportunity. And, um, and that's the thing that I think Tim is really good at just um, pushing that on their trips and their guides, that's you know, just kind of spend a little time hanging out with their guides after, after they got off the river, you know, and they're just like, it's that, the little brotherhood, you know, they're just kind of like, all right, you know, what, what worked for you? What worked for you? It's like, all right, you know, I'm yeah, going to just, see where you go tomorrow. I'm going somewhere else. Yeah. It's definitely just like you said, it's the experience and the pursuit. Um, you know, just being able to go to a river and knowing that there's fish there. Some days it might be a good day. Some days it might not be a bad, you know, it'll, it might be an awesome day. That's, that's oh, what yeah. always brings us back. And knowing that in the back of your mind that they're, the smallmouth alliance is out there um, spread out throughout the states. Uh, Tim's over in Wisconsin, Mike's, Mike's right. in Ann Arbor. Um, I believe there's Illinois, and so it's all over. And it's, it's slowly right. growing, which is good. Um, that's all for the positive uh, because, you know, it's, it's not so much about – it is about the fish, but it's also about the enjoyment knowing that you can right. go out there oh, yeah. and catch and release, you know, yep. being able to, or, yep. or doing the limitations that need to be done. If, if, if that's, if that's your, your, your style, but it's all for the good. And that's, that's the right. best part. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. And yeah, so it looks like, you know, with the, with the smallmouth Alliance, it is actually, I think the chapters are all by state. Yes. And, um, you know, probably as it grows, it may get to where, you know, you have a, a tri-state area that is getting together and, you know, you know, start working a couple of things together. But, um, but yeah, right now it seems like each, each state kind of has its, its, um, its small mouth alliance in, yeah. those, in those given areas. And, but that's great. You know, I mean, that's, uh, if that's a good thing, to, the way to start and, um, you know, if they're protecting the fisheries, we're super stoked to just be, be a part of that as well. And, and keep that all moving. So, absolutely. And um, you know, we do actually. Uh, so we do have a blade project that we did. You might have saw the blades we did with uh, with Link. We did a brown trout shoal cut blade. So uh, you know, there's just uh, there's endless projects that we uh, that we can take on. And so I mean, I, I really look forward to. I know this is a very disjuncted kickoff to our season, but um, you know, I mean, I think as we get some of these smallmouth out there and and people start to see them and start to order them up. It's uh, it'll definitely really take off. You know, once you said like, as soon as people can see them on yeah. the river, you know, and see somebody have them on their boat, be like, oh wow, what is that? You know, that's that's the part that that really starts to happen. And and we've seen like the 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 series kind of grow, and the ones that have been around for a while is like they're the ones that get the best traction, and then it just kind of takes a while for each individual model to kind of develop its own its own little following but that's why we branched it off to the to the uh to the mx ors so we basically have those available where basically someone can just look at an mx or and size they want and then literally pick their species and put that on those mx ors and then and then the brown trout blade is just just only available right now in the shoal cut but um, we have people that, that pair them up. You know, we've got people that have done the, the brown trout shaft with the brown trout blade, you know, and it's kind of like, hey, if you got the smallie, if you got the smallie wrap on your drift boat, you might as well have these oars. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Day, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, you got to make the whole, whole thing match. And, and that's the thing is like anglers, then they're passionate about something, you know, that's why they put a wrap on their boat. You know, that's why that they're, you know, they'll gravitate to those oars with that cool graphic. And when they find out that part of it goes to the smallmouth alliance, they're like, oh, well, that's cool. I love the graphic, you know, so, <laughs> so that's very key as well. So, well, awesome, Matt. I appreciate your time. I appreciate, appreciate you it. joining us here, even though you're on East Coast time. And 
And hey, we got um, through know, it without very, the kids coming down, so it's a positive. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was looking forward to the kids just uh, bombing the place, but you know, take we'll, it we'll over do that it. another time. Little B, take exactly. it over the interview. <laughs> right. No, I appreciate right. it. But, uh, um, and I'm, I'm confident and, that it's going to be a home run. Uh, like we said, we just got to get them out there, and uh, I'm confident that this storm's going to go away, and we're going to be back, and these things are going to be on fire um, because it's a good, Absolutely. good project all around it's all positive um and it's it definitely has two good people repping it on top of it um but Absolutely. no i definitely i'm honored to be here appreciate it uh had a had a great time and hopefully right i feel on, the Matt. questions <laughs> yeah and i would definitely um encourage folks to uh go visit mike at uh schultz outfit yes in in um and Where's, where's it Arbor. exactly in Michigan? Ann Arbor. In Ann Arbor? Um, yeah, Mike Schultz Outfitters, Schultz Outfitters in Ann Arbor, uh, Yipsy, Yipsy. Um, they're, they're open, doing the curbside. If not, hit them up on the phone. Same thing over with uh, Tim at Titan Lines in Wisconsin. They're open. Tim's got a little basket outside. He's been hand washing it or wiping it down and everything. Um, nice, make nice. sure you guys support the shops during these times. Definitely get out Excellent. there. Um, Excellent. Excellent. Because that's yeah, that's what like that's said, what we need. Those are the places. Those are the places that people can see them in person. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's the thing. If you got to see them in person, even if they don't have your size, you know, you get to see them, and then and then you'll know. Then you'll absolutely. really know what you want to get. You know, absolutely, absolutely. for sure. Well, excellent, Matt. All right. I really appreciate it. Have a good evening. Yeah, you and, too. Uh, we'll see you next time. All right. All right. Take later. care. Bye.